Hi and welcome. My name is Zuzanna Gorski and I'm a resident in anatomical pathology at the Ottawa Hospital. Pathology is the study of human tissue and for many patients, it is an important part of the care that they receive. The process begins when the specimen arrives at the lab and ends with the examination under a microscope by a pathologist. After the examination is complete, the pathologist provides a pathology report, which summarizes the findings. However, unlike many other areas of medicine, most of the action in pathology takes place behind the scenes. In the following video, we will walk you through the process from the beginning to the end in order to show the many steps that go into the making of a pathology report. Our journey begins when the tissue sample, or specimen as it's called in pathology, is brought to the lab. The case is given a unique surgical pathology number and cassettes are created to hold the tissue samples. Next, the tissue undergoes gross examination. In pathology, the word gross is used to describe something that can be seen without the aid of a microscope. The purpose of the gross examination is to describe the tissue sample that was received and to identify any abnormalities in the tissue. After inspecting the outside of the tissue sample, the pathologist's assistant slices the tissue into thin sections so that any abnormalities on the inside of the tissue can be better visualized. The pathologist's assistant then selects tissue to be examined under the microscope. The selected areas of tissue are cut into small sections and put into the previously created cassettes. After spending several hours in formalin, a liquid that preserves the tissue, the cassettes are moved to the processor. The purpose of the processor is to dehydrate or remove the water from the inside of the tissue and replace it with a type of wax called paraffin. This step can take anywhere from two hours to eight hours, depending on the type and size of the tissue sample. Next, the cassettes are moved to an embedding station when a technologist places each piece of tissue in liquid wax. The wax is then allowed to cool and harden, forming a wax block around the tissue sample. Next, the tissue sample, now fully embedded in a wax block, is moved to the microtomy station. At this station, a technologist cuts the tissue into ultra-thin sections. The tissue sections are moved into a water bath before being placed on a glass slide. Next, the glass slides are moved to a machine that applies a combination of stains called hematoxylin and eosin, or H&E, to the tissue. This combination of stains is designed to stick to tissue and allow pathologists to see microscopic features that would be invisible in unstained tissue. Next, the glass slides are sent to a pathologist who performs a microscopic examination of the tissue. 
A pathologist is a specialist medical doctor trained to analyze tissue and to combine those results with other information about the patient in order to reach a final diagnosis. In some cases, the pathologist may decide that additional tests are required before a final diagnosis can be reached. These tests are performed by technologists in the lab using a variety of specialized machines. Finally, the pathologist writes the pathology report, which is then sent to the patient's electronic medical record. The purpose of a pathology report is to summarize the results and to provide a diagnosis that explains the changes seen in the tissue. That is the end of our video. We hope that it helps you understand what happens to tissue when it is sent to the laboratory and the many steps that need to take place to complete a pathology report. If you would like to learn more about pathology or have questions about your pathology report, please visit mypathologyreport.ca. Thank you.